Hi, this is Anne with the third little anagram in this series about how you take um, a simple table and um, transform it into the table that's the, um, the destination for the assignment this week. Um, what I'm going to do in this particular one is um, show you how to calculate a maximum and then also how to add this um, little ordered paragraph at the bottom. So um, it's different than just adding a row to the table. And um, I'm going to give you both the both of the maximum values. And then it's going to be your job to um, add these minimum values. And you have a little trick with the minimum values because I don't want you um, what I don't want you to do is include this unassigned administrative unit. So what you have to do is you have to figure out how to calculate a minimum when you don't want to process unassigned. So you'll just need a little extra if statement there. Okay, so um, let me get all of that cleared off and open up the code again. Okay, and um, just to show you where we're at. Okay, we're, we've got a total line. We've got our fatality percentage uh, column. And now all we're gonna do is, um, is calculate a max. So um, these are the patterns that you should pretty well understand by now. Um, and I'm going to do this with um, a little object because we not only want to have the maximum value, um, but we want to um, we want to have the name of that county. So what I'm going to do is start by creating a little object. And yeah, I think we'll call it max confirmed OBJ. And um, it's going to have two things, um, a name, which is currently blank. And um, as always, um, when you're doing a maximum, the value that you are a Accumulate into and comparing with starts out at the lowest value that it could be in this case zero. So um, we end up with a max confirmed object like that. And um, before we do anything with it, we're going to go ahead and console log it. Just so we can watch it as we process it. Okay, and sometimes we get our code wrong. Okay, so we want to look for line 42. And I must have, oh, yeah, we know the difference, right? This is a colon. Okay, so never hurts um, to be able to print that out. I'm going to find the line that's printing this out and get rid of that. Yeah, turn that off. So we can just watch that one clean line. And no, I, I do notice that um, Replit wants me to drop some files and folders. I'm not sure what's happening there. Um, I'm going to ignore that. and Maybe at some point it'll go away. OK, so this is our max confirmed object there at the bottom. And um, maximums are pretty straightforward, right? Um, we have, we have, we're in here, we're processing data for counties in Wyoming. We have a county object, okay, where this is a number. And it's also important that this has been changed into a number before we start trying to do arithmetic comparisons on it. So if, the county obj 
confirm is greater than the max confirmed of confirmed, which is a little hard to say, but not so hard to type. Okay, we're trying to find numbers that are bigger than our current maximum number, right? So if the current county is bigger than the biggest we have so far, then we want to remember two values. We want to make the biggest so far. We want to assign the bigger number we just found to that. And then we want to remember the name And that's all there is to finding maximums every time. Okay, so our maximum confirmed number of cases is 666. Our maximum county name is Fremont. Okay. And now we need to add that. But um, I'm trying to think there was one more thing. I mean, the thing that, that is critical to this is this is simple enough if when you've gotten your API data, you've already turned those into numeric values, okay? If you were trying to do data I confirmed, down here is a comparison, it just won't work. The <clears throat> results are, uh, as we say, euphemistically undefined, okay? So now we have, when we're at the bottom of this loop, we have this, we have a name and a number for the largest county. So what we need to do is we need to go over here to our index and you'll find this is that there is a little paragraph with an ID for each of those values that you need to, um, you need to add a paragraph for. So um, let's just go over here back to script and Remember, whenever you're trying to put something into an element on the page, you have to use, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab this so you don't have to watch me fat finger it. My typing is bad enough. I know he's making the bid go slower with it. Okay, so we wanna create an, an element object, okay? And we wanna get the element, which in this case happens to be a paragraph, with the ID max confirmed, okay, maximum confirmed. So we need to grab a hold of that. And then if you've done your reading, you know that you use this strange named property. Oop, didn't mean to replace that. Okay, inner HTML is equal to the string you want. And <clears throat> since I'm specifying the string, I'm gonna go ahead and grab it all from my solution. Again, so you don't have to watch me type. But the, let's go see that. Okay, we want a <clears throat> sentence in here that says, whatever the county name is, county has the most confirmed cases and then the number of cases. And so all I did was, there's the county name there's the string in between, and there's the count of confirmed cases. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that logging off just to keep the console kind of quiet. And I now have that there. So um, I think I'm gonna give you both of the maxes and you're gonna have to convert to calculate the minimums without ever having the minimum be unassigned. So you need to find a way to ignore the unassigned values and still calculate a minimum. And that's it for this one. Hope I'm getting faster. <laughs>